Ba ba da ba 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 da ba ba da ba. I need a mustache. Dilla beats. Am I right, guys? Who feels me? Anyway, I'm sure we've seen a lot of lessons and videos about these intentionally out of time Dilla intentionally sloppy artifact mimicking drum and music beats lately. And whether you take the sort of five elated, nine elated metric precision approach or you think of them more as just badly lined up samples within your track software there's a lot we can do with these things and one of the approaches that i like best to learning these beats is carson grants carson has made a study of learning hundreds of individual dilla and dilla-esque beats and i'm not even going to scratch the surface of what he's achieved. I definitely encourage you to check out his channel. But I really have just been listening to a lot of these in the last couple weeks and I thought that I would make a lesson and I chose at random five evolutions of the sort of Dilla beat from my Spotify playlist because these beats are kind of ubiquitous now and people are doing interesting things with them. So I tried to choose five examples, each a little different, and I'm going to show them to you in order of sort of progressive complication. So if you're starting with the default sort of Dilla beat, the way I discussed in my previous lesson or the way Arthur Buckner discussed in his lesson that I was referring to, then we can view these variation beats in terms of their level of departure from that. And the closest to that is the first tune, which is Changing Me by Tom Mish. In some cases, you're only going to vary things by adding some kick drum variations. So let's take a look at that. So if we stripped away all the pushing and pulling in the changing me beat, it would just sound like three, four. And indeed, it's very close to that. The push-pull in changing me is extremely subtle. But the first thing I hear is I hear the first two bass drum notes closer to swung than straight. So instead of three and four and... I hear it a little bit lilty. But the following two sound closer to straight. So if you picture taking the, the drum beat, three, four, and only halfway swinging the first two kick drum notes, it would sound like. And that's, it's a little inconsistent, obviously, I'm not great at this, but I'm trying. That's nine-tenths of the way there. The rest of it is I do a little lilt on the last and four and. So the entire thing, three, four. And that's pretty funky. On beat four, there's a variation every four beats, which is just... And that's the entire beat. So it's interesting enough when you're making reference to every eighth note in the bar, but sometimes you can take liberties by not playing every note and just implying things. So the next tune I checked out leaves a lot of space, but still manages to imply this intentionally halfway, halfway straight, halfway swung, falling down a... Uh, Flight of Stairs, Slinky, Dilla Beat. This is Dayfly. We can go fly over the wall, wall, yeah. And I know you've been trying to kill them all. In 
day fly, the primary challenge in the verse is to convey this sort of Dilla beat without much information. Because besides the overdubbed swungish eighth note things, the biggest indicator of where the beat is is just halftime. It's just literally three, four. And sometimes he'll throw in that variation on beat four. So one, two, and three, four, because the bass line is bount, bount, bount. So that's the beat in the verse. Let me play it one more time. Three, four. And there are other variations with the kick drum, but that's the gist of it. So the only reference point you have to the, the halfway swung Dilla-ness is that particular spot on the hats. And it's even more spare in the chorus. Where, despite the overdub, you're literally just playing half notes. Three, four. It's not until the second half of the chorus where you finally get some of this So I saved the most difficult beat in four for third, and this is the one that comes closest to some of these really old school artifact ridden Carson Grant Dilla beats. And rather than having everything deviate by the same amount, there are different spots where they deviate by different amounts within the bar, and this sounds really funky. This is number one. Okay, so number one is probably the most complex of all the beats that are in four, and maybe the most complex of all in this lesson. And if you think about it from kind of a Carson Grant standpoint, the number of things that you need to memorize as pushed or pulled is the highest in number one. So the beat, if we weren't pushing or pulling anything, would just sound like this. Three, four. And there's a little hi-hat variation on the end, so three, four. I can't help but pushing or pulling it. So the interesting thing about this beat is there are two layers of complexity. The first is the fact that the first snare note is delayed, but the first kick drum note isn't, at least the way I hear it. So instead of, it sounds a little more like, so the way I think about that is just, I'm playing the kick drum normally, in the normal spot, but I'm delaying the snare drum. So three, four. And I'm sort of playing the second half of the bar normally for that exercise. Let's try that again. Three, four. If you're doing it right, the, the closeness of the kick drum to the snare should surprise you. And indeed, that's what your ear th thinks, what, what your ear go goes through when you're listening to this on the recording. And the second half of the bar is this halfway swung eighth with the hi-hat embellishments. So three, four. Right, so the, the final thing is the pattern not on the fourth bar 
or the variation not in the fourth bar of the beat, but in the third, which is... So the whole thing, three, four. And that's number one. Sometimes people even play these beats in odd meters. This next example is one that's a little simpler in terms of how much you're going to deviate from the structure, but it's got an odd meter happening. This is Alpha Mist. So many things try. So the Alpha Mist track is more simple. It's uniformly halfway swung, but it's in a slow seven. And it's felt like one, two, three, one, two, three, four. And I'll play that for you now. One, two, three. The nice thing about this beat is you can kind of create this scaffold of halfway straight, halfway swung. And everything sort of falls within that, if you want to think of that as quantized, but also sort of offset. There aren't variations within the quantization the way that some of these other recordings, which mimic these sort of Dilla artifacts of intentionally sloppy sampling are but there's one cool part at the end of the bar of three where you have the hats and the kick not line up and that's a classic sort of acoustic interpretation of dilla that i perfect perfect timing perfect timing i don't even care that i spoke about it in my other lesson so anyway that's the gist with alpha mist so guys, I hope you enjoyed that trip down Nate's Spotify playlist memory lane. There are plenty of other examples of Dilla beats or Slinky beats or falling down the stairs beats, but I thought these were a good representative for to showcase for you a few of the different ways that you can play with this stuff. Guys, if you like this lesson and you've got a favorite Dilla tune, leave it in the comments for me below. Otherwise, you guys know the drill. If you've been watching these videos for a little while and you feel like you're ready to go deeper, you think you might be ready to study with me, well then I recommend my product, the 80-20 coaching course. And I don't know why I just lapsed into Southern, but I, I feel like a Southern gentleman telling you about the 80-20 coaching course. It'll put you right. It'll set your drumming right. In all seriousness, it's like three to six months of studying with me with highly produced transcribed sequenced lessons for around the price of a single lesson we only open that a few times a year but if you'd like a completely free gateway drug which will also improve your playing and show you a little more about what that's all about i recommend you click below the video player and pick up my three free videos in three weeks that's three videos that'll make you better in the next three weeks than you've gotten in the last six months my dudes it's been real once again. I will see you next week in another lesson of the week.